Good morning and welcome to our Tuesday Bible class. As we do the readings for this last week, uh, the gospel was Jesus cleansing the temple, but in the uh, Old Testament lesson, which we're going to talk about now, comes from Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 7. I'm not going to read it all to you because it is the Ten Commandments, well known by every Christian, and in fact, probably a lot of non-Christians alike. Uh, one final note, uh, funny note about it is, is this Sunday when our elder read it, he struggled a little bit, as I do too when reading this out loud, because I had learned it in the small catechism. I learned it when it was the thou shall not and such things. So it's actually hard to sit there and slow your brain down to read the words that you've memorized. Uh, but uh, the Ten Commandments are, are a, the ethics, the values, the Christian life, as it were. How are you to live? And Luther breaks it down into uh, three uses, uh, curb, uh, mirror, and roller. And uh, I still teach us to the confirmation kids. I don't know if they remember them or not, but they are taught it. I try to review it over and over. And that is that the Ten Commandments can be used in three different ways. A uh, curb is so society can drive on the streets without hurting people, keep the traffic in its right spot. And the Ten Commandments are for society, even they don't believe in God, are useful to keep us from destroying ourselves, uh, don't murder, don't steal, don't commit adultery. Even the uh, first commandment, have no other gods. The, 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 in the 20th century, some of the most horrific uh, governmental actions were done by governments that had believed in no gods. They had gone full atheist. And so there's that. Then there's the mirror, the second use, which is the one we Lutherans tend to use the most, and in my preaching in particular. And that is that we look at ourselves in the mirror of the law and see who we really are not who we think we are. It takes away the uh, masks of how good we are and shows that we are really sinful creatures who need a savior. Third use is for Christians only, uh, and that is the ruler, and that is to help us gauge our Christian living. So as we grow in our faith, we get better and better at things and worse sometimes too, and we can judge that, and so we can work on ourselves. Uh, we Christians are not uh, static creatures, and we're definitely not uh, unethical creatures. And the Ten Commandments helps us with that. Now, what Luther does also in his meanings to these commandments, and I'll touch on it in a minute, is that it, he does a really kind of little nasty thing in the meanings. He tells us what we cannot do, and all that's pretty run-of-the-mill stuff. And then he always says, but you should, and he tells us what we should do. That's actually the harder of the group and actually where the, the Christian ethics and values hit the road. Let me give you an example. Small catechism uh, starts off with the Ten Commandments. We'll just do the uh, one that we all know is uh, uh, thou shall not murder. Or you should not murder the Fifth Commandment. And in it, uh, uh, it's pretty straightforward. You should fear and love God so you do not hurt or harm your neighbor in his body. You know, and actually a lot of people think, uh, well, I've never hurt or harmed anyone, never punched anyone, and I've never killed anyone, so I haven't broke that commandment. Uh, if you want to go down that path, it's another another lesson for another day. But Jesus says, if you have even had hate in your heart, you broke this one. Uh, so the Ten Commandments are not a place where you can find good loopholes, as it were. That mirror is brutal. Um, but going back to my point here. Uh, then Luther says here, but help and support him in every physical need. That's the hard part. Caring for your neighbor. It's easy to ignore the neighbor. I haven't hurt you. I haven't, helped. I haven't helped you, but I haven't hurt you. But that's still not fulfilling this commandment, that my neighbor is physically cared for. Are our food banks fully loaded? Has our homeless been given clothing and boots, especially during the winter? Uh, are the poor receiving the vaccinations as well as the rich? Such, so on and so on and so on. Luther, these... Uh, the end of his meanings are very brutal, actually, to us. The uh, Eighth Commandment is actually my favorite of them all. I try to live by it. Uh, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. And uh, we should fear love God so that we do not tell lies about our neighbor, betray him, slander him, or hurt his reputation. Okay. So if I just keep my mouth shut about the neighbor, I've, I'm good? And then Luther does this again. But defend him. Speak well of him and explain everything in the kindest of ways. I can assure you our world will be a lot better if we learn to defend our neighbor and speak 
speak well of him and think of him in the kindest of way. So whenever someone makes a mistake or you perceive a mistake or anything, kindness, forgiveness, and maybe that you really didn't understand where they were coming from. We jumped the gun to hatred instead of to kindness way too much. With that said, uh, God's blessings on your week. I hope it is safe. And let us pray. Dear Lord, bless us this day. Keep us safe from all harm, especially the pandemic. Help us to see our need for a Savior in the Ten Commandments as we look at what we are supposed to do and see that we have fallen short. And also, Lord, we ask that you help us to live the Christian faith. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.